Hey Capsuleers, this is Anti Lee with another episode of EVE Basic, how to do the basic things in EVE. Today I'm going to talk to you about items and fittings. I'm going to try and keep it brief because there's a whole lot of stuff related to items and fittings that I can get into. But as it is, I don't have much time and you don't want to sit through a 45 minute video about items. So what I'm going to start with is guns. I'm just going to go over these very, very quickly. So let's say here I've got a 425mm Auto Cannon 2. Right click on it say show info that's right there at the top now you have five uh, basic tabs description attributes fittings prerequisites and variations the description tells you about the gun attributes that tells you a bunch of cool stuff about the gun which i'll get into in a second here fittings tells you about cpu usage and power grid usage how much power grid that you could expect the gun to take up how much cpu you could expect to take the gun up or the gun to take up Prerequisites, that's what you need uh, to have trained in order to use this gun. Variations, this is another window that I will get into at the end of the video because there's something that you can do with this window that is very, very cool and very helpful. And I've been playing for a few years and I have only just figured this out the other day and this has made a whole world of difference in figuring out what item to use. So let me get back to this attributes window real quick. I'm trying to keep it quick. Accuracy fall off, 9,600 9, meters. That is the maximum range that your gun is effective. Optimal range, that is the uh, best range that your gun is accurate to. So 2,400 meters and less, your gun's gonna do 100% damage. Anything more than 9,600 damage or 9,600 meters, and you're lucky that it hits. And that, of course, is modified by what kind of ammunition you put into it. Damage modifier that is a multi multiplicative factor for the ammunition that you decide to use, and that is going to adjust your damage as well. Uh, charges per cycle that's how many it fires, and where is it rate of fire? That is how many it fires, uh, how many rounds that it fires. This is 5.62 rounds per second. Now let me go talk about launchers really quick. I'll point out the big difference between launchers and guns. Let me right click on this Arbalest cruise missile. I'll say show info. I'm already in the attributes tab here. And you'll notice that it has a rate of fire, but it doesn't have any sort of optimal range. Now let me tell you about what optimal range uh, with missiles is, how you can figure that out. Let me scroll up here. I'll go to my Scourge Heavy Cruise Missile. Show info. Now in here in the missiles information, you have a max flight time 6.5 seconds, a maximum velocity of 4,300 meters per second. Basically multiply those two together and that's a good idea of how far you can expect your missile to travel. Anything less than that, your missile should hit for full damage depending on what target you're shooting at. Anything more than that, your missile will just disappear in space. Now. One thing that I'd like to get into is talking about uh, overloading, and then I will talk about metal level. I'll try and keep the discussion about metal level pretty short. It's hard to uh, it's hard to keep a conversation about metal level short, but we'll see what I can do. So overloading, you'll see here. You'll notice that it says heat damage. That's 2.1 HP. Uh, I believe that's per second. And the overload rate of fire bonus gives you a 15% greater rate of fire. So that uh, what that does is that takes that rate of fire and it uh, multiplies it by uh, what would it be 0.85 and then that would be your new um, and then that would be your new rate of fire so it'd be something like somewhere around 13 seconds uh, or 13 seconds per volley for that uh, torp launcher too. Now let me talk real quick about rigs. Uh, here are rigs right in here. Let me just right click on this one medium anti em show info. And you see right here, it's got a little, uh, it's got a little inf info uh, that says drawback 10%. It basically means for every additional rig that you put on, the next one will be 10% less effective. So in other words, right now it gives you an EM damage bo resistance bonus of 30%. The next one is going to be uh, what would it be 27%, and then it would go down from there. Um, fittings. This said that it must be installed into an available rig slot on a ship. And I will talk about rig slots right now. So let me go uh, show information on a ship to give you a uh, idea of what the important things to look for in one of your new ships are. So here's a Merlin. Let me right click and say show info. Now you have the same tabs as you did before, except now you have a new tab that says fitting, which is already in, but you have description, attributes, fittings, prerequisites, recommended, and variations. Like I said, I'll get back to the variations. 
Recommended is uh, has to do with certificates, which I'll talk about in a later skills episode. Uh, prerequisites, the same thing, and fitting is the one that I really want to uh, focus in on here. Uh, CPU, that shows you how much CPU the ship has. Same thing with power grid and calibration. Calibration is for rigs. The uh, low slots is for armor tanking, among other things. It's armor tanking and damage mods and some other cool things like expanded cargo holds. And medium slots is typically for things like shields. It's also used for things like micro warp drives, afterburners, and uh, web of fires, warp scramblers those kinds of things. High slots is typically weapons that's its most common use, but you can also fit core scanner probe launchers to it, uh, remote armor repairs, uh, remote uh, shield repairs, things like that. Those will go in high slots. Uh, sal salvagers, tractor beams, those kinds of things, all in high slots. Now up here you see turret hard points, three hard points. That means that you can fit three turrets to this, uh, to this Merlin, and it has three high slots. So that means you can put a turret in every single one of those high slots. Upgrade hard, upgrade hard points, those are uh, spaces for rigs. Now it says rig size small, so that means that in order to put a rig into this Merlin, you're gonna need to use small rigs. Now let me talk about the fitting window. The fitting window is a cool window. It tells you a lot of information about your ship. Let's get into that now. The hotkey for this by default is Alt-F, and I'm gonna, talk about this left section of the uh, sh of the fitting window first and then I'll get into this right section of the fitting window here. Now starting from the top left you have your rigs here and like I said this is a Merlin so for a Merlin it's small rigs so you see I have a small anti-EM screen reinforcer, small core defense field extender and another small core defense field extender. This little uh, this little gauge here is your calibration you see it's at minus 37.5% and up here is your calibration as a numerical value. Uh, these three circles re uh, demonstrate your turret hard points, and here's a and here's a little picture of a turret so that you can tell. Now each of these are neutron blasters, and those are turrets. Now here's a little picture of a missile launcher. You see that there aren't any circles underneath it. That means that there aren't any missile launcher uh, hard points for this for this one but up here is where your high slots would normally be. Right here are your mid slots. If you look, I've got a afterburner, shield extender, invul field, and a shield booster. Now those are your mid slots, and down here are your low slots. You've, I've got three low slots, but I only have two things in them. I've got a magnetic field stabilizer and a damage control one down in there. Damage control one just adjusts your resistances, which I'll get into in a second. Same thing with adaptive invul field two. I'll get into that in a second. This little gauge here is your CPU in blue and your power grid in red. CPU goes up, power grid goes down. As a numerical value, these are also right here. CPU 22.5 out of 225, power grid 7.2 out of 50. So these, this is a numerical value. Now down here to the bottom left is your cargo hold and your drone bay. If you click on either one of these, it'll bring it up. I have a bunch of antimatter charge S's in there. And down here is my drone bay. Can't click on it because I don't have a drone bay in this ship. Now up at the top of the screen is your is the name of your ship. Now you can do something cool with this if you want to talk to your corp mates and be like, hey, look at this cool fitting I just made. You can click and hold this, drag it, and drop it into the chat box so that way people can see your fitting. Look, there's the Merlame. But let me just delete that because nobody in help chat cares about my Merlin. Now directly underneath that you have the capacitor. You see here in red it says depletes in 0, 0, 0, 0, 42. That means that it uh, depletes in 42 seconds. This is in hours, minutes, seconds. Right here you have 437 gigajoules. That is the maximum capacity of my, uh, of my capacitor. And to the right of that it says 131.25 seconds. That is how much time it takes for your capacitor to regenerate from zero to full. Right here, this delta, 7.2 gigajoules per second, that, uh, that demonstrates how fast or how slow you're losing uh, power. That is subject to change based on the modules that you put on your ship. Right here you see it's negative 86.2. If that was anywhere from zero to 100, that would mean that I, would, that I am cap stable. And up here at the top, it would say stable in green. Anything from negative 1% to negative 100% is 
means that you are unstable and that your capacitor will deplete eventually. Now the gigajoules per second, like, like I said, that's either a rate of generation or a rate of consumption. So negative 7.2, I'm spending 7.2 a second. If it was positive 7.2, I'd actually be regenerating 7.2 gigajoules of my power grid per second. Next window down is offense, 135.6 DPS. That's all in turret you see here because it separates it by turret, drone, and launcher, DPS. Defense, this number here is your effective hit points. That effective hit points is factors in your resistances and your shield and your armor and your structure. So this effective hit points is really how much damage your ship would take to blow up. If you look here, I have uh, 1200 HP on my shields, 420 on my armor, and 500 on my structure. I'll tell you this much, that probably doesn't add up to 3200. Resistances play a part, as does regeneration. Um, regeneration does not factor into your EHP, but on something like a kill mail, it's gonna it's gonna be a little bit more than what your EHP is. Now you'll see here six HP per second. That's how fast my uh, shield recharges passively. Uh, negative twelve sixty or twelve sixty one HP. That's how much HP my shield has. Four hundred sixty eight seconds. That's the same thing as the capacitor. That is how long it takes to recharge from zero to full shields. Uh, 420 HP, that's armor. 500 HP, that's structure. Now right here, you'll see this little lightning bolt that looks like it's going into a plate. That is EM damage. This little wavy heat lines thing is thermal. This uh, bullet looking thing is kinetic. And this explosive thing is, go figure, explosive. And you see the percentages of your resistances here. I found that one of the better ways to get your EHP up cheaply is to fit uh, resistance um, enhancing modules under your ship, such as this adaptive interval field 2 and this damage control 1. And these are things that you're not going to see on your fitting window. You have to undock and turn them on to see how they affect your EHP. Underneath this you have targeting. You can, actually, you can also see this in the info window of your ship. You go to attributes, you'll see down here, there's all your targeting information, there's your propulsion information. Let me close that. So you have targeting 11 points, that is how strong your sensors are. It You have to be jammed for more than that in order for you to lose your lock. This is your scan resolution, higher the better. Uh, basically a battleship takes a lot longer to lock onto a frigate than the other way around, and that has to do with scan resolution. As the bigger your ships get, the smaller the scan, the smaller the scan resolutions tend to get, and like I said, this isn't golf. The bigger, the better. Signature radius 50 meters. That is how uh, big you look to the other ships targeting. Uh, max lock targets. That is how many targets that your ship can have locked, and that's provided that your pilot has the ability to lock that many. Uh, for example, this one can uh, lock five. That means that you'd have to have targeting at uh, I think four. I have multitasking at one, and I can lock seven targets in my Raven, and yeah, the Raven is limited to seven anyway, so. Navigation, that's how fast you go. That is altered by skills. Um, mass, that is the raw mass of the ship, 997, I guess that would be tons. That is the inertia modifier of your ship, which has to do with how agile it is, how fast it can make turns, how fast it can align for warps, things like that. The bigger, the better. Um, or is it the smaller, the better? Less inertia? Easier to move? I don't know. <laughs> and the ship warp speed, six AUs per second. That is, so let's say you had a uh, 36 AU warp that you had to do from one side of the system to the other. That's six AUs per second. Your warp would take you roughly six seconds, give or take. There is some acceleration, some deceleration while you're warping. Now, let me show you real quick how to browse and save fittings, and then I'll get on to one of the cooler things that I have to show you in this video. Um, Oh, well, first of all, let me talk about this real quick. Strip, that will remove all the modules from your ship. I'll go ahead and do that right now just to uh, demonstrate it, but real quick, let me save my fitting. So if you want, if you have a good fitting, something that you like, you can click on this button that says Save. You can name it whatever you want to. My ship is named Merlane, but let's just call it Hi YouTube. And I will save this fitting. Now. Now let me strip my ship like I promised you I would, just to show you that this button actually works. Strip, do you really want to remove all the modules from your ship? Yes. There they go. No more modules. 
but you'll notice that the rigs stay in. That's because it is not possible to remove rigs from your ship without destroying them. If you want to put a new rig in your ship, you absolutely can. The only thing is, is that you're going to have to destroy the old one in order to you know, jam it in there. Now let me go to Browse, and that will show you Saved Fittings. There are two different drop-down boxes. There's Corporation and Personal Fittings. Corporation Fittings shows you everything that your corporation has saved, all their approved fittings that they're fine with you flying. So let's say I wanted to fly an Interceptor, and I could fly an Ares. That's that fit for the Ares. But let me back it up a little bit. Let me go to Personal Fittings. I had just saved a Merlin fit, so let me go to Frigate. Merlin. Looky there. Hi, YouTube. There's that fitting that I had. Now you see down here at the bottom there's a little button that says fit. Let me hit fit. There's all my modules back. You'll notice the only thing it's missing is ammo. I just gotta go back there and put some ammo in there. And it's as easy as that. So as promised, let me go back and have a quick discussion about metal level. Typically, the better the metal level, the better the item is going to be. It'll also typically be cheaper to fit in terms of CPU and power grid. But let me show you a really, really cool utility that I've been playing for years, and I just found out about this recently. So if you learn this and you learn how to, how to use this, you'll be a step ahead of the game already. So let me see this uh, Mining Laser Upgrade 1. Let me right-click on this and say Show Info, just like you would with anything else and go over here to this variations tab that I mentioned earlier in the video. Now you'll see here you've got Tech 1, you have a list of Tech 1 modules, and you have Tech 2, this list of Tech 2 modules here. And you're probably trying to think to yourself, um, I don't have the skill to use a mining laser upgrade too, but you know it's really tiresome to just click info on every single one of these, and it's really annoying trying to remember all the numbers. Let me show you something cool. Check this out right here at the bottom. Compare. Click on that and it'll bring up this brand new big old window. Now you have all the information from the uh, attributes tab that you normally see. Only now you can compare them all. So let's say you wanted to look at metal level. There's metal level right there. Let's say you wanted to look at mining amount bonus right there. And let's say CPU penalty. Now let's not look at that. Let's just ignore that. I don't like that. <laughs> so here's your mining amount bonus. We'll sort this from high to low. We already have. And here's your metal level. Look, check that out. If you think you can use a mining laser upgrade one and you want to use that, but you don't have the skills to use it too, you probably want to buy an AOD mining laser upgrade. That's tech one, which means that you can use it. Look at that. 9% mining bonus. That is the same mining bonus that you would get from a mining laser two with less time required uh, spent to learn how to use it. Now you'll see here, metal level four. Now down here you see five, six, seven, eight, nine, and nine, but you have metal level zero, one, two, three, four, and five. That's typically how it goes with metal level. It's usually a matter of the higher the metal level, the better the item, and metal level fours are typically quite similar to what you could expect from a tech two item, only you have a lot less time spent training. Now it can go back and forth whether or not those are more efficient on your CPU or more efficient on your power grid. That's something that you're going to have to evaluate yourself. For example here, let me click on power grid usage and CPU usage. Uh, you'll see this is actually three CPU less than the Tech 2 and the same amount of power grid. That's pretty standard for metal level items. Uh, metal level uh, 4 usually use less power grid than a Tech 2 and are usually just about as good. So that's pretty that's pretty par for the course and the power grid usage for all these mining laser upgrades is the same all across the board. And that is that is great. So if you're trying to find a mining laser upgrade, you can't use a tech two, but you want to get it now, I'd recommend the AO mining laser upgrade. And you can very easily figure out what you want to use with any sort of item through that comparison window. So let me just close this out and I'll show you once again how to get back to that window. Go to whatever item you want. You can even do this through the market if you'd like. All you gotta do is show info. So let's see, I've got this GIST B-type large shield. Show info, variations. Look at all those variations, that's a lot of stuff. Compare, it took a while for all that to load up. And that's all you gotta do. Now you can just check by whatever you want. Do you wanna check by what the shield bonus is? Sure. 336 from the Pith X-Type Large Shield Booster. So now you know which one to get. All right. 
Anyway, thank you very much for all the views. Thank you very much for all the subscriptions. You're making me feel quite loved, and you're making me really motivated to continue doing these videos. I really appreciate it. And uh, just, you know, fly safe or fly dangerous. It doesn't really matter. As long as you get out there and fly and enjoy yourself and enjoy the uh, world of EVE, the world of New Eden, and uh, Tranquility Server, <laughs> run around and pop some people for me. This is Anti-Elite, signing off.